Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And this is our final video of this series where we were looking at using the Creality Scan Raptor Pro to scan some car parts. We then used the Creality Scan 4 software to process that quick surface to do some alignment of multiple meshes. And then we used Autodesk Fusion to design our part using freeform tools, basic solid tools, 3D printed the parts, and we're gonna install them on the car as a test fit, mock up, make sure that they fit. So throughout that entire process, we covered basically the whole spectrum of what you need to know to be able to design parts like this on your own. Keep in mind our goal or intention with these was always going to be 3D printing. Uh, the intent was never for like an injection molded part, but throughout the design process, we did talk about certain things that we may change or do differently. There are plenty of different variations of these types of parts that you can make, but the, the whole entire premise of this was to scan a factory part and then build a new version or a new part that goes in its place. So bolt in the factory location where the light went and then have the factory bezel bolt to these parts. So that has this sort of nice factory finish. Now, obviously these parts are yellow because I just used a hyper PLA. And uh, in reality, what we would do is we would use a, a better color if we were gonna print these as a final end use part, something like a PET G or a PLA CF or something that's a bit more durable. But three millimeters thick, these are pretty stout and these will um, kind of get the job done at least for the mock-up stage. A couple of things we didn't do or talk about, uh, we didn't add a lip around the back of the part so that a hose could be clamped on there. We made sure that we left enough room to make that happen, but we just didn't add that little detail to it. Part of the reason is because I know that uh, PLA material like this is just going to be a mock-up, so I'm not super concerned with little final details like that. The first concern is to make sure that it fits, all the screws are in the right location, and all the parts fit together. That's usually what I do with a first print or a first mock-up. Uh, the little piece took about two and a half hours. The big piece took four or five hours, somewhere in that range. So um, very easy to do if you have two printers to get it done in a day. Um, I am only ran it on one printer, a, a Bamboo P1S, and I ran um, both parts in a day. I just happened to finish, uh, this one finished overnight, and I just popped it off in the morning. So a couple of things that we need to consider when we're doing something like this. Um, the first is the accuracy of the scan that we need. So with a part like this bezel, the bezel was probably one of the more critical pieces of this because I really wanted to make sure that the ducting fit very well on the backside and that it didn't look out of place. I wanted it to look as factory as possible. So having a good clean scan of the backside of this part uh, was, was key and making sure that the bolt holes could line up and that when you look at it from the front, you don't really see any gaps or, or any issues there. So using something like the cross laser line mode with the Raptor Pro gave me exactly the level of detail I needed. We scanned the back of it, the front of it, uh, did a third scan on the top just to help with alignment. And the final version of the mesh was good enough for what we needed. Um, the second thing to consider is going to be other parts where we have mounting locations that are critical. So for example, the light itself had three mounting points on the back, all in different planes. And then it had two mounting points on the front for the bezel to mount to this light. There were a couple of extra features that we could have incorporated, but those are the, the really the critical bits. Scanning something like this can be very difficult when we've got glass, uh, especially since we've got all these diffusers inside. The glass tends to diffract the lasers, which means that it's gonna be messy. So we could have used a prep spray, but because I didn't really care about the glass, the, um, the light wasn't gonna get reused. All I really wanted was the backside of this. So everything I got was uh, perfect for our needs here. And then the last thing is to understand that we need a scan of the bumper without the stuff installed. And then we also needed a scan of the bumper with the parts installed because that helped with alignment. So we could align the bumper scan with and without together. Then we could align the bezel to the installed bezel location so I knew where it should sit. And then that helped us design all the stuff we needed. Really didn't actually need the light scan at all. Um, it was helpful to have just in case, but I could have done it without. And so um, it was just kind of an extra piece that we scanned. So with all that, then using Fusion to design the parts, we used freeform modeling, which is my go-to anytime we're making complex organic shapes like this, because it helps us because we can snap to the mesh if we need to. We can build out unique shapes. 
And then we can add solid features like these little tabs and bosses after the fact. So really nice to be able to use freeform modeling quick and easy. Now in all in all, I mean, I don't know how long these videos are gonna be. I know that um, each part of the modeling process is probably 45 minutes to an hour. So you're probably looking at two hours just on the design side, probably an hour or two on the scan and processing side, and then whatever this wrap up is gonna be. So um, in reality, if I wasn't filming, I probably could have done all of this in one to two hours. So that's from capturing the scans, processing, and aligning and then going in and doing the design. So uh, keep that in mind that this can happen relatively quickly. And for doing things like a first iteration to make sure it fits in the car before you add a bunch of other details like additional mounting locations or if you're trying to incorporate things like um, LED lights to replace the turn signal or marker lights, then you can do all that stuff in a second version of the part. I, I think oftentimes we end up getting in, stuck in this situation where we spend hours and hours and hours to design a, uh, a final version of something. And oftentimes that final version is missing some key details. So I generally will go at a process like this and do a, a mock-up or a first version, knowing that it's very likely going to change. Um, that was the same thing uh, when we did our shock clamp for the GPZ series. So I did a first version, functionally it worked fine decided to make some changes and some updates, change material, change some features, and that's fine. You can go through that process and you can improve your design without having to worry as much about things like the cost of manufacture. Um, the amount of PLA used here is, you know, maybe a couple dollars, not very much, as opposed to having to send it out, having somebody print it, wait for it to get here. Um, we could do all of this in a single day, get a mock-up, and then spend the time adding those little details like um, hose connections and little lips and recesses for clamps so that the hoses fit tight, um, or potentially adding more detail, having a second pipe that can screw onto this and then turn up and point the direction it needs to or whatever the case might be. So with all of that, let's go ahead and install these on the car, see how they look and work, and then we'll do our final conclusion. To install this, we really just need a couple of um, bits. I was able to reuse some of the original hardware, but um, where these two pieces go together, I just needed some longer screws, so I had to use uh, some updated hardware. Uh, but essentially the first step is to get these things to line up, put some longer screws through, and then install it in its place. Now, because we're able to use 3D scanning and make sure that we had references for all the features like um, the sheet metal that could potentially be in the way, we know that this thing is gonna fit. I just need to screw this all the way in. For this one over here, factory location was slightly hidden. Let's get that in. All right. Now, remember that we only have three mounting points, which means that um, this one over, the smaller one on the side uh, isn't actually mounted to anything. So if that's a problem, what we could do is we could go back and take a look at our scan and um, uh, potentially make use of some other features. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is Go ahead and screw this on. Now, there is a good chance that the head of the screws I used to hold all this together could be obstructing the bezel just a little bit. So that is, again, that's where we would take a look at maybe a second iteration. But let's go ahead and just screw that on. This is the first time I've screwed it together on the car. So hopefully it doesn't make me a liar. And there we go. So I think we probably, I think the Phillips head screw in the center, is probably just holding that up just a little bit, but I think it works pretty well. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look. All right, and there we go. So overall that process, again, without recording, can take one to two hours from setting up, scanning everything, and uh, processing the scans, doing the design, and starting the 3D printing. So if you know what you're doing and you've done this before, you are able to do this relatively quickly, 
and get to your first iteration in likely the same day that you started. If you like to see this kind of content where we walk through the entire process from scanning to processing to designing and uh, printing and installing, then leave a comment, let me know. Uh, this content does take quite a long time to do. And I think oftentimes it doesn't get very many views. So if nobody really wants to see this deep of a dive into a part, there's no reason in filming it. If you wanna see more abbreviated versions of this kind of content, let me know that as well. We can certainly put together a highlight reel or, or overview of the key steps in the process and um, talk about that overall. But as always, uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and we'll see you in the next one.